Israel is mysterious, monumental, and mythological when it comes to its contribution to the history of mankind. A wealth of artifacts and ruins in Israel have been discovered by archaeologists over the years that shed light on the country's long and complex past. Welcome to Crunch. Today, we are looking back at all the amazing discoveries made by archaeologists in Israel and the Holy Land. New Artifacts Discovered in Israel Archaeologists in Israel have uncovered a trove of ivories from the time of the First Temple of Solomon, providing new insights into the wealth and status of Jerusalem during this period. The ivories were found at the Gavati parking lot site near the city of David, beneath a parking lot. The site is believed to have been the location of a large administrative building during the First Temple period. The ivories are made of elephant tusk and are decorated with intricate carvings of plants, animals, and geometric designs. They are similar to ivories found in other ancient Near Eastern cities such as Nimrud and Samaria. The archaeologists believe that the ivories were imported from Assyria, either as a gift from an Assyrian monarch or as part of a trade agreement. They believe that the ivories were used to decorate furniture in the administrative building or possibly in a palace. The Magic Mirror Recently, a 1,500-year-old magical mirror from the Byzantine period was found at the ancient site of Usha in northern Israel. What makes this incredible discovery even more astonishing is that it was found by a 17-year-old student from Kiryat Motzkin near Haifa. The student, Aviv Wiseman, was participating in a week-long survival course that included a 90-kilometer trek and excavations. The magic mirror is made of lead and is inscribed with a variety of symbols and images, including a cross, a fish, and a human eye. The symbols are believed to be apotropaic, meaning that they were intended to ward off evil spirits. The mirror is thought to have been used for magical or ritual purposes. It is possible that it was used to protect the owner from evil spirits, or that it was used for divination or other supernatural practices. A 2,000-year-old receipt Israeli archaeologists have found a 2,000-year-old financial record in the city of Jerusalem. The inscription, which is written in Hebrew, was found on a broken fragment of limestone tablet. It consists of seven fragmented lines, including the name Shimon and symbols representing numbers. The inscription is thought to be a receipt from a commercial transaction. It was found in the lower square of the ancient city of Jerusalem, along the Stepped Street, which was a major commercial artery. The context of the discovery supports the interpretation of the inscription as a financial record. Note that financial records from the Roman era aren't even close to being the earliest. That honor goes to finds in Mesopotamia, aged around 4,000 years, that list receipts, disbursements, contracts, pledges, and whatnot. That's also where archaeologists found a letter with an early customer complaint from a person named Nanny Grousing to a merchant named Ea Nasir in the city of Ur 3,750 years ago about his lousy copper ingots and discourtesy to his envoy to boot. An international joint venture. A new study of an ancient factory in Israel that produced royal purple dye has revealed that it was a joint venture between the Israelites and the Phoenicians. The factory, located at Tel Shikmona on the coast of modern-day Haifa, was in operation for about two centuries, from the 9th to the 7th centuries BCE. The study, published in the journal Tel Aviv, found that the factory was built and controlled by the Israelites, but that it was staffed by Phoenician workers who had expertise in the production of royal purple. Royal purple was one of the most sought-after dyes in the ancient world. It was made from the secretions of a type of sea snail, and it was used to dye textiles that were worn by the rich and powerful. The dye was so valuable that it was even used to dye the sails of ships. Archaeologists say that the joint venture between the Israelites and the Phoenicians at Tel Shikmona was a sign of the close economic ties between the two cultures. The Phoenicians were renowned for their skills in shipbuilding and trading, while the Israelites were skilled in agriculture and warfare. The joint venture at Tel Shikmona allowed the two cultures to pool their resources and expertise to produce a valuable commodity 
that could be traded throughout the Mediterranean world. The study also sheds light on the economic history of the Kingdom of Israel. The factory at Tel Shikmona was one of the most important production sites for royal purple in the region. Its operation helped to boost the economy of the Kingdom of Israel and contributed to its rise as a regional power. The Oldest Gate a team of archaeologists has unearthed a 5,500-year-old city gate in Israel, the oldest of its kind ever found in the country. The gate was discovered at Tel Arani, an archaeological site near the city of Kiryat Gat in southern Israel. The gate is made of large stones and measures about 1.5 meters wide. It is flanked by two robust stone towers and is connected to the city walls that were previously uncovered at the site. The gate is believed to have been built in the early Bronze Age, around 3300 BCE. This was a time of great change in the region as people began to move from smaller settlements into larger cities. The construction of the gate is a sign of the growing importance of Telerani as a regional center. The gate is also significant because it provides insights into the social organization of the time. The construction of such a large and complex structure would have required a great deal of planning and cooperation. This suggests that the people of Telerani were organized into a complex society with a clear hierarchy. The discovery of the gate is a major archaeological find that sheds new light on the early history of Israel. It is a reminder of the rich and complex history of the region and it provides valuable insights into the development of urban society. Home of the oldest cities Around 3000 BC, modern-day Israel was home to the Canaanites, who lived in the Levant region of the Middle East. That means apart from Israel, they were spread in Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, and parts of Turkey and Egypt. Today, they are known for their advanced culture and their many well-fortified cities. These cities were stupendously organized and had complex water systems. They were major centers of trade and commerce. Some of the most important Canaanite cities in Israel include Jericho, Hazor and Megiddo. Jericho's foundation is believed to be as old as 9000 BC. They founded their cities on hilltops or near water sources that enabled them to create well-developed water systems, including reservoirs, aqueducts, and cisterns. They also had temples, palaces, and other public buildings. Also being located on major trade routes, they traded goods with other cultures throughout the region, including pottery, jewelry, and metalwork. Who was Nazareth? In 1925, archaeologists discovered the remains of a Neanderthal man in a cave near Nazareth. This was the first time that Neanderthal remains had been found outside of Europe. The man, who was about 40 years old when he died, had a pronounced brow ridge and a large brain case. He's believed to have lived in the cave about 50,000 years ago. Since the discovery of the Nazareth man, other Neanderthal remains have been found in Israel, including the remains of a woman and a child in the Kabara cave. These remains have been found in caves in the Galilee region, the Judean desert, and the Negev desert. The Neanderthals who lived in Israel were hunter-gatherers who subsisted on a diet of wild animals and plants. They lived in small groups and used stone tools and weapons. The Neanderthals in Israel disappeared about 40,000 years ago. The reason for their disappearance is not fully understood, but it is thought that they may have been displaced by modern humans who migrated to the region from Africa. Thanks for watching yet another Crunch video. If you'd like to watch more videos about the history of locations like the Holy Land, tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click that bell button to be notified about new videos.